Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 8 Video 4 on Motions Prediction using Seakeeper. Now that we've run our analysis, we can start taking a look at results. There's a toolbar in Seakeeper which allows us to select which results we want to look at. So we can choose the speed, heading, wave spectrum and location that we want to review. Then when it comes to reviewing the results, we can view them in numerical form in the data tables, in graphical form in the graphs. We can also look at polar plots of responses relative to heading and speed. And we can also generate 3D animations of the vessel in the actual sea state. It's important to understand the context of these results. Because the vessel is moving forward, the actual wave spectrum that it encounters is different from the natural wave spectrum. What we actually have is that the encounter frequency depends on the velocity of the waves and the velocity of the vessel. And of course, it also depends on the angle of the vessel relative to the wave train. This means there's a transformation that happens so that as we go through the wave spectrum at a certain speed, there's effectively a Doppler shift of the spectrum, which compresses the wavelength so that the actual frequency that the vessel sees is higher than the frequency in the natural sea state. The most common method of assessing the overall response of the vessel is to look at the response amplitude operator or RAO. It shows how the response of the vessel varies with frequency and it's a non-dimensionalized value relative to wave height or wave slope. So the common situation is to plot our RAOs, which is really a response, uh, a proportional response relative to frequency, uh, where a response of one means that the vessel is responding in exactly the same way as the wave. A value higher than one means the vessel is moving more than the wave and a value lower than one means the vessel is moving less than the wave. So when we're down at low frequencies, that means we have a long wavelength with low frequency, the vessel moves up and down with the wave and so our response amplitude operator RAO is around about one or unity. So it's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the motion of the vessel and the motion of the wave. Up at high frequencies, uh, the wavelengths are short and the frequency is high, our RAOs tend to zero. That means that these short, small waves pass through the vessel without really affecting its motions. What we're really interested in is the peak or the resonant frequencies. They occur close to the vessel's natural period of motion. And so around this peak period, we see that the vessel motions are largest, and that's what we have most interest in when we're looking at sea keeping. Seakeeper has a summary table to help you take a quick look at the overall results. The first 13 rows of that table just show the input data and the analysis condition. Then there's a few rows with the wave information, followed by a number of rows with the CG response and the individual remote location response. So let's take a look at all these values now. We go over to Seakeeper, our analysis has been run. And so if we go to our results table and we look at our summary table, these first 13 rows just really summarize the input data. So our wave configuration, our vessel configuration, and the analysis settings. The next three rows detail uh, how we've defined the wave spectrum and a summary of the total added resistance of the model. And then the next nine rows give us the response of the vessel at the center of gravity. So we have three motions, our heave, roll and pitch motion, our heave, roll and pitch velocity, and our heave, roll and pitch accelerations. Now remember we're computing all these values over a range of different frequencies, so we're doing all of this in the frequency domain. So all of these results here are what we call M0, that means it's a mean squared value across the range of frequencies. If we scroll across, we can see there's another column, which is the RMS value. So that's the root of the mean of the squares. So this is the square root of the adjacent value. And then the third column is the significant amplitude, which for the Rayleigh distribution of these uh, wave spectra is double the RMS. The significant amplitude is a common design value, and it's the average of the top one third of the occurrences within the spectrum. 
So that's our overall response. And then we move further down the table and then we have the individual responses at each remote location. So if we're looking at the bridge, we have our vertical motions, both absolute motion and world space and relative motion relative to the wave surface, absolute and relative velocities and absolute and relative accelerations. We also have summaries of our longitudinal motions due to pitch. So those again are motions, velocities and accelerations, our lateral motions due to roll. And then at these remote locations, the computation of the motion induced interruption and motion sickness incidents. And then that's repeated for all of the remaining remote locations. In the graph window, we see our overall response of our vessel in terms of our RAOs. So this is a very typical RAO response. We're at the lower frequencies, it's one. We have a peak near the resonant frequency and then it tapers away at the, at the uh, higher frequencies. If we want to look at the results at different uh, vessel speeds, we can select from the toolbar and also for distant, different headings, we can select different uh, headings from the toolbar to view different results. Also in the graph, we can see the response of the vessel in terms of motion sickness incidence. And so what this gives us is a series of curves defined by the ISO standard. So these are acceptable accelerations for eight hours exposure, two hours exposure and 30 minutes exposure. And then we graph on top of that the actual responses at our accommodation location and our bridge location. So when we see our remote location response exceeding the allowable, we know we have a problem in that area in that the accelerations at that remote location are too high relative to the standard for that period of time. There are a range of other graphs that we can show in this uh, window. We can show the actual response of the center of gravity and also for more advanced users, the actual spectra and hydrodynamic uh, results of the analysis. Finally, another useful graph is our polar plot. If we bring our polar plot curve forward, we can see that the polar plots graph the uh, vessel speed on the radial axis, the vessel heading on the circumferential axis, and then we can choose to plot any of the values. So we can plot heave motion or accelerations or what have you across the curves, and we can see uh, with the color coding the relative magnitude at different headings and speeds. So that summarizes uh, the results in terms of tables and graphs. In the next video, we'll see the response in terms of uh, time series animation. Thank you for watching.